Manning readily admits she changed her mind about Pelosi and as a result, changed her vote. During Manning's first bid for Congress in 2018, the Greensboro Democrat told WXII 12 News she hadn't made up her mind about Nancy Pelosi as speaker. I'll make that decision like I make all my decisions. I want to get all the information. I want to know who's running and what their positions are, see what kind of leader they are, and then I'll decide who to vote for. Three months later, Manning made up her mind and announced her decision with this campaign ad. I'll vote against Nancy Pelosi for speaker. Manning lost her 2018 race to Ted Budd, never had a chance to vote against Pelosi. But in 2020, she won the seat vacated by Mark Walker, and her first vote was to re-elect Pelosi as speaker. You have changed your view then on her, is that right? I, I have changed my view based on watching her in action and, and watching what the facts are. Manning says in 2018, she believed Democrats needed new leadership, but now says the speaker has done a great job the past two years during tough times. I think what we have seen over the past two years is that she is an extraordinary, extraordinarily competent leader. She understands how to get things done. She really cares about the needs of the American people. Joe Patterson, a student at UNCG and an independent voter, says he remembers seeing Manning's campaign ad promising to vote against Pelosi. So what was your reaction when you saw that she voted for uh, Ms. Pelosi? You know, I was just kind of disturbed that her first act as a congresswoman would be to not keep a promise. Patterson says he's no fan of Pelosi and says Manning's off to a bad start breaking her promise. I'm not naive, you know. I expect politicians to lie and break promises, but, you know, to do that on your first day was really just rubbed me the wrong way. Manning says she and Pelosi share the same concern for people struggling with the pandemic and that the speaker is a leader the country needs. And what we need in Congress, we need more grown-ups. And I think Nancy Pelosi has proven herself to be the grown-up in the room time after time. Nancy Pelosi won a narrow victory as speaker over the weekend. She has led Democrats in the House for more than a decade. She is the first woman to hold that job. In Greensboro, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Meanwhile, it is Election Day again in Georgia. Today's U.S. Senate runoffs could determine whether Republicans maintain control of that chamber or if Democrats take it. Both incumbent senators are Republicans. Here's a look at the current balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Republicans have a 50 to 46 seat advantage over Democrats, but the two independent senators caucus with the Democrats, so it's effectively 50-48. If Republicans win one of the two seats up for grabs in Georgia, the GOP will maintain its majority. But if both Democratic challengers win, it would tie things at 50, and then Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would serve as the tiebreaker, effectively giving Democrats the advantage here. More than 3 million people voted early in these Georgia runoffs. Polls are open until the top of the hour tonight. It could be well into the morning tomorrow before we know the winners. The final step in certifying the next president of the United States is tomorrow, but some Republicans are planning to challenge the electoral vote count in Congress, including locally Congressman Ted Budd. There have not been any credible allegations of voting issues that would have impacted the election result. The objections are expected to fail, but they could turn what is typically a short ceremony into a multi-hour event. Again, that's happening tomorrow. Meanwhile, the president's supporters are expected to rally in Washington, D.C. again tomorrow. The White House confirmed the president will speak at that event. The National Guard has been mobilized to help with crowd control and with traffic in and around the district. Look for previews of tomorrow's rally and congressional vote tonight on NBC Nightly News. It begins in about 20 minutes, 630 right here on WXII. It's a new year, but the Alamance County Sheriff says a violent crime continues to be a growing problem. Deputies responded to the county's first homicide yesterday. They say Isaac Weathersby the fourth is accused of killing William Jean Williams the third. Sheriff Johnson says that Williams was selling a gun online. He says Weathersby and two other people drove from High Point to Burlington to check it out. Deputies say that the shooting happened at Williams home. A chase with the suspect ended in Greensboro and the sheriff says that there are vicious crimes happening all along I-85 and I-40's corridor. They're not only occurring in this county, they're occurring in adjoining counties. They're leaving 
the crimes are leaving our citizens dead and our families mourning for the loss of their family members. Says that he's upset that these individuals are coming into Alamance County and, quote, preying upon our citizens, end quote. More crime tonight new at 6. Winston-Salem police officers say they need help solving two different missing persons cases. Justin Schreyer spoke with detectives today about what they know so far. He joins us live tonight outside police headquarters. Justin, what do you have? That's right, Kenny. Good evening. Police say they are looking for two people, a woman. Her name is Lucinda Ferris and a man. His name is Elicio Ernesto Gomez Martinez in two different unrelated cases. Police say this man on your screen right now, Elicio Ernesto Gomez Martinez, was reported missing on November 25th of last year. They say he walked away from his home and never returned. Police say he is off his medication and has a cognitive disability and is not in any 